For this task, you'll make four designs first and select your favorite design. Then you're going to trace it onto some tracing paper. You do not need to worry about coloring in everything, just do the outline. Once it's traced, we're going to color the back of the tracing paper with a dark pencil, so it could be a 6B or a 7B. Once that's done, you're able to transfer your drawing now to your rubber tile. So you'll just press down hard with a pencil, probably a 2B or an HB pencil is fine, or a pen works quite well. This is going to transfer the graphite that you put on the back of the paper onto the tile. As you can see, the lines have transferred. This will smear off though, so you're going to use a marker next to trace the lines that you've done. And if you're using straight lines, it's a good idea to use a ruler. After you do the outline, then you're going to color in all the black parts of your design because we're going to carve out the white parts. We're going to cut those parts out. When we're using the gouges or the carving tools, there's some different safety equipment we can use. So the metal one is called a bench hook. So that prevents it from slipping when you're using the tools. You can also use a non-slip mat. With the gouges, we always want to carve away from your hand, away from your body. Do not put your fingers in front of the tools. And you can rotate the tile around as needed so that you're always carving away from yourself. So you want to keep the fingers out of the way, going in the opposite direction of your body. Using the mat keeps the tile from slipping around. When you're using the tool, you want the knob, the end of the tool, to be in the palm of your hand. That gives you more power when you're pressing, when you're pushing it. There's some different types of tools that have, the gouges have different shapes. So there's V gouges and U gouges, which just describes the shape of the tool at the end. It's either shaped like a V or a U. And there's bigger ones and smaller ones. Always take your time, don't rush. And here's the completed one. Now we're gonna apply the ink. We have an ink pan. Always use just a little bit of ink because you can always add more, but it's really hard to put it back in the bottle if you have too much. So I'm spreading the ink with my brayer or roller onto the pan. I want to spread it until it's nice and even. And the ink will make like a sizzling bacon sound is what a lot of people describe it as. And I'm just going in a couple of different directions to make sure it's even, evenly coated on the block. For this, I'm just picking it up and I'm going to try to put it on in the middle. Then just slide it. Now I'm using a baron to apply pressure to help the ink transfer from the block to the paper. You can also use a spoon. All right, 
so that's my small print for this. Now I'm going to make the big one. So for the big print, we're going to use a large tile, rubber tile, to, and mix colors to create a gradient for the background. And then we're going to use the small tile again and rotate it four times. So I can do this by mixing two colors. I'm going to spread it out. I've got this nice big pan and this nice big brayer. Um, and when you start to roll it, the colors will start to mix a little bit. I'm kind of moving the roller so that it overlaps to kind of get a nice blend happening in the middle with green. So it didn't give as much coverage as I wanted. So I'm doing it again with more ink this time. I'm using the spatula just to kind of spread it out so it's easier to roll, make it a little bit even, more even. All right, I think it's blended really well in the middle now, so we're gonna try again. Right, so now for the paper. I have put marks here on this mat as registration so that I can line up my paper and my rubber block centered. So I'm just lining it up so that that colored square is going to be in the middle of the paper. And I'm using the Baron, I'm just gently rubbing it around in circles to transfer the ink from the rubber block to the paper. This is just a clean roller to help apply more pressure. Okay, looks good. So for my tile now to put it on my colored square, I need to decide which corner I want to rotate around. And I'm going to draw an arrow on that corner because that's gonna make it a lot easier to rotate it and not get confused. It's the same process before. Don't use too much ink because you can always add more. You can't take it away. So I'm going to roll the brayer over the tile, try to get a good even coverage of ink. And now carefully try to line it up in one corner. Remember my arrow is going to be the corner we'll rotate around, so it's going to point to the middle. It's just a clean brayer to add some more pressure. And now the Baron 
in circles, gently. And peel it off. You want to be really careful about keeping the table clean. And wipe up your ink so that it doesn't get on your paper. Keep a wet washcloth so I can just wipe ink off of my fingers when my hands get dirty. Arrow pointing towards the middle. Line it up. Clean brayer. Use the Baron. All right, two down, two more to go. Find my arrow, make sure it's pointing to the middle. Clean my fingers. Definitely want to keep the table clean as much as possible because the ink, you only want it on the paper in the spots that you have designed it to be, not smudges from a messy table. This is our last one. And it's done. Put it on the drying rack to dry.